Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I am still talking about periodic trends, but in this lesson, I'm going to be very specific and talk about the exceptions that we see in the ionization energy trend on the periodic table. Go get your notes, get a periodic table, something to write with, and let's get started. Okay, so let's remember what ionization energy is. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron. Let's write that down. When this electron is being removed, the substance is in the gaseous state. Okay, let's also remember that trend. So for ionization energy, as we move down the group, ionization energy is going to decrease. Now, as we're going across the period, ionization energy is going to increase. So the overall trend for ionization energy is to decrease down the group, increase across the period. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So as we go down the group, we're adding more and more and more energy levels. So our atom is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the valence electrons are getting farther and farther away from the nucleus. And if ionization energy is the energy it takes to remove an electron, well, the electron we're removing is a valence electron. And the bigger the atom is, the farther away that valence electron is. And according to Coulomb's law, as charges are separated, you know, we've got that positive nucleus in the center, we've got those valence electrons way out here, and if they're close, we've got a really strong nuclear pull. And so it's gonna be very difficult to remove an electron. But as our atom gets bigger, that electron's moving farther away from the nucleus, and it is going to get easier and easier to remove. So as we go down the group, atoms are getting larger. That means the electrons are getting easier to remove. So the ionization energy decreases. If we think about going across the period, atomic radius or atomic size is getting smaller as we go across the period. Again, because we're adding more and more pluses to the nucleus, we're adding more and more negatives as we're adding electrons, more positives, more negatives. That's an increased attraction. And so basically, the electrons are going to pull closer to the nucleus as we add more protons and more electrons. So as we go across the period, atoms are getting smaller because of that pull, and we just said that the larger atoms require less energy, and the smaller atoms are going to require more energy. Again, because those valence electrons are closer to the nucleus, the nucleus has a stronger pull on them, so they're going to be harder to remove. So let's draw those arrows. Now remember, this is for ionization energy. So ionization energy is going to decrease as we go down the group. So I'm gonna draw a backwards arrow, meaning francium, its valence electrons is in the seventh energy level. It's so far away, it's easy to steal not much energy. But hydrogen, way on up here, it only has one valence electron and it is right next to the nucleus, much more difficult to steal. That's the group trend. If we look at the period trend, it is going to increase as we go across the period. Again, because the atoms are getting smaller and the valence electrons are closer to the nucleus. In many periodic trends, there's going to be a few exceptions. When we talk about things increasing across the period or decreasing down the group, whatever. When we talk about that, that's like a general rule. But like I said, there's some exceptions. And with ionization energy, there is a very specific exception. This exception is going to be found in the P block in group 15 and 16. Here, let me show you why that is. Okay, so let's look at these two exceptions. The first exception is gonna be found in group two. And the second exception is gonna be found in group 15, between 15 and 16. Now this has everything to do with the sublevels. If we're in group two, then we're in the S block. And remember, S just had one orbital with an up arrow and a down arrow. As we move from the S, we're gonna go to the P sublevel where we have three orbitals. Now, once we get to the first electron that's in the first P orbital, we've got that up arrow. This configuration with just one electron in the P sublevel is less stable than it was when we just had the S with the two electrons. This S with the two electrons, this full sublevel, is going to be a more stable configuration than if we had more electrons and we moved to the P sublevel and had this electron. So basically, I'm saying all of that to say this electron is easier to remove than this electron. This electron makes the sublevel full. 
more stable. So group two often has a higher ionization energy because of this stable configuration. Then when we move to group 13, where we have the next electron in the P sublevel, this electron is a little bit easier to pull off because P only has the one electron. So oftentimes, group two ionization energy is gonna be a little bit greater than some of those groups after that. And it has everything to do with the S having two electrons and being full. Think about that. Atoms like full sublevels. Atoms like full orbitals. Because this exact same thing is the reason why we have this exception between group 15 and 16. Now group 15 and 16, this is in the P sublevel. I'm gonna draw another P orbital. Now it doesn't really matter which energy level we're talking about because everything in group 15 and 16 are going to be using the P sublevel. A stable configuration for atoms that have their ending electrons in the P sublevel is when we go up, up, up. With that being said, it would be pretty difficult to remove this electron because the atom really, 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 really wants to have one electron in each sublevel. So that's why it's very stable. If we go and look at the very next electron placed, okay, so we've got up, up, up. Now that very next electron placed is going to be this down arrow. This down arrow is going to be much easier to remove than this one here. That's because up, 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 we've got one electron in each of the orbitals of the sublevel. When we add this fourth electron, it's not as stable. The atom's like, eh, I don't really care about you. And so it's easier to remove. So this situation up top, this represents group 15. This configuration down here, this represents group 16. We said that as we go across the period, it's going to increase. The only problem is, is there's a little bit of a hiccup between 15 and 16 because group 15 is going to require more energy to remove this last electron than group 16, which is going to require a little bit of less energy. Let's look at that on the periodic table. Maybe that'll help. I hope I'm making sense. So here we are with groups 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, the P block. Everything in group 13 is going to have one up arrow in that first orbital. And then we've got the second orbital with an up arrow. So we've got the third orbital with another up arrow. This is stable. This is why group 15 is going to have a little bit of higher ionization energy because it's stable. There's one electron in each orbital. So as we move to the next group, that is where we're going to go down in that first orbital. This electron is easier to remove than this electron. So group 15 has a little bit of a higher ionization energy than group 16. Now group 17 and 18, as we're adding those other electrons and filling up the P orbital, we get right back on track with that trend. Okay, well I hope that helps. Don't forget, this was just the exceptions for ionization energy. If we need to know a little bit more like the difference between first ionization energy, second ionization energy, third ionization energy, Go ahead and click that link up in the corner and watch my lesson on atomic radius, ionization energy, and electronegativity. Until next time, bye y'all.